Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part 51 of my Java video tutorial series. Today, I'm going to draw the game board in the previous tutorial, which if you haven't watched it, you have to watch it before you can proceed to this one. We created our asteroid objects and the class for those objects. And then in this one, I'm going to create the game board. All of the code in this tutorial is available underneath the video, and you should get it if you really want to learn this stuff. It's free, so get it. All right, so just like last time, I'm going to use sort of a modified unified modeling language, or UML, here to define my class diagram for my game board. And just to stay within my normal naming conventions, I'm going to call the game board Lesson 51, but it's the game board. So i got to think about, looking at what's on the left side of the screen, what type of things I'm going to need to define. I'm basically going to create an object that's going to represent the game board. Then I'm going to create a method that's going to redraw the game board. And then I'm going to create another method that is going to draw the game board for the first time and then make changes thereafter that are going to be passed on and then redrawn. Okay, so I'm going to define it. Now, of course, I'm going to need to know my width of my game board. So that's something I need. And I'm also going to need to know my height for my game board. So it's pretty simple. And then I'm basically just going to have my main function just like always in the past and it's going to return nothing. Later on I'm going to do a more perfect UML tutorial but just for now to keep it simple I'm going to do everything this way. So then I'm going to need to repaint my game board every single time there's changes to be made and I'm going to pass it the board which is going to be of lesson 51. And then what do I need to do? Well, I'm going to call the constructor, and this guy right here is going to be past the game board, which once again is named Lesson 51, and it's going to return nothing. Then, quite simply, all it's going to do is execute code over and over and over again, and that is what we call a thread. All right, so then what do I need to do? Well, I need to define what the game board is going to start out as, so this is going to be another method called Game Drawing Panel. And one of the things that's on the screen, obviously, what's bouncing around rocks. So I'm going to have to create an array list that's going to be full of a bunch of rock objects. And then I'm also going to need to have access to the polygon array that's an integer array. Contain all the X points for all the polygons. And I'm also going to need to have access to the Y array for those polygons. And width is going to be a reference to the actual width of the board. And height is going to be another integer that's going to have represent the height of the board. And if I scroll that up right there, I'm then going to have a constructor called Game Drawing Panel, of course. And it's going to run and return nothing after it's done. And basically what it's going to do is call a method that I'm going to call paint. And this method is going to get past a graphics object that's going to contain all the state information for rendering of graphics and drawing shapes and doing all those things that the graphics object does for me. And then it is going to return void as well. So that is all I need. Just those couple things right there. So now knowing that, I'm going to jump in and create my game board class. On with the code. Now again, you're going to see how simple this is, and that's just going to define the layout that I'm going to use for my J panel. Then I'm going to go public class, and I'm going to call this lesson 51, and it's going to extend the J frame, and that's what we're going to be drawing on. See, just grabbing and reusing things. Boom, like that, and I got all my class information. Then using what's on the right side of the screen, I'm going to define public static int, and this is going to be my board width, and I have it set up here so that it can be accessible to my rock class. And then I'm going to do the same exact thing for my board height. Throw that in there. Height. There you go. And then we're just going to create this J frame or this game board inside of main for now. Args. And that is all it's going to do. New lesson 51. Right like that. And there you go. So that's going to create the whole game board. So we have to create lesson 51. So go public lesson 51. And then I need to just define all the defaults for this J frame or this game board. So it's going to have a size, obviously, and that size is going to be board width and board height. Real easy. And then this, I'm going to give it a title, even though it's not really needed. Java Asteroids. And then this again, set default close operation. This is going to handle closing this guy when I'm done with it. Pretty simple stuff. And then I'm going to define my game drawing panel. I'm going to call it game panel. Going to be equal to new game drawing panel. Call that constructor. Figure that all out. And there is my game drawing panel. See it right here. And this guy is going to create the first version of the board for me. That's all that's going to do for me. And then I'm going to say this 
add this new game panel to the center of the screen. So for now it's going to fill up the whole interior of the screen for me. And then what I need to do is execute redraws of the screen every single time something changes on the screen. So to do that I'm going to use a tool called Scheduled Thread Pull Executor. And I'm going to call it Executor. And then you go New. Yeah, this is a long one. Paste that in there. And then I'm going to throw 5 inside of here. And all that 5 means is that's what we call the core pull size. And it's just the number of threads to keep in the pull, even if they are idle. And then we have to tell Java when to execute certain types of code after a certain given delay. So to do that, we're just going to go Executor, Schedule, At, Fixed, Rate. So we got to say, okay, what code are we going to execute? Repaint the board. And that's what we're doing here. And this, which is a reference to the game board itself. The initial delay, we don't need to have an initial delay, so I'm just going to put zero inside of there. And then I'm going to say every 20, and then here I have to define exactly what time unit I want to use. So it's going to be time unit milliseconds. So every 20 milliseconds, I want to redraw the game board. And then we can come over here and see that we have an error and import the time unit library. So that's all fixed. And that's pretty much all we need to do except for set visible, show the frame on the screen. So it's real simple, just breaking everything down. This is why object-oriented programming is so beautiful and very, very easy to work with. All right, so now we're going to need to define our classes. First one is repaint the board. And I'm going to put implements runnable. And this is the runnable interface. And by creating this, we'll be able to continually redraw the screen over and over and over again. And we're going to go lesson 51 is the board. And then public repaint the board, which is the constructor whenever this is called. And the board's going to be passed over to it. And then we just got to go this version of the board, which is the one being used inside of this class, is equal to the board that was passed over. Pretty simple. And then whenever you implement the runnable interface, you have to create a method. And you can see that right here. If you zoom in, add unimplemented methods, just click on it. Save yourself some typing. And you can see there's run. So I can just delete this all together. Get rid of this. And then inside of run, we're just going to say the board repaint yourself. And that's it. That's the code that's going to be run over and over and over again. So pretty simple. That's going to handle redrawing my board for me. And then now all I need to do is define all my defaults and all the things that are going to change as the game progresses. So I'm going to create another class called game drawing panel extends J component, which is like the master component. And then I have to, like it says right here, see there's everything over here. Just keep referring to the right side of your screen. I need to create an array list that's going to contain all of my rock objects. New array list, rock, just like that. Then I want to get the original X and Y points in an integer array for the polygon called rock. So I'm going to refer to the rock class here. And because this was set up as a static value in the previous tutorial, I can just grab that, borrow that from that guy, paste that in there. Oh, and up here I forgot to type in rocks, which is going to be the name of my array list. And then I'm going to go and get myself the game board width, right like that, and height, less than 51, the height. Then in public game drawing panel, the constructor for this guy. I'm going to create 50 rock objects and store them in my array list. Do this with a for loop, int i is equal to, and this is going to be changed later on so that it will be a lot easier to define how many rocks are going to be drawn to the screen. I'm actually going to have this be a static value later on in the tutorial. But for now, this works. And I'm just going to go int random start x position. And this is just going to make sure that all the polygons are in different positions on the screen. We don't want them drawing over top of each other. Math, call the random function. And also, so these asteroids or rocks are moving around at different speeds. It's going to be nice to have the random value inside of there. Less than 51, board width, and then give myself some padding. That's where the minus 40 comes in, plus 1, and there you go. And I'm going to basically be able to copy this guy to create my random starting position for my Y, starting polygon drawing part. So here I just need to change this to height, and there you go. Everything else is going to be the same. Then I just need to start adding my rocks to my rock array list. So call the add method and go new rock, and then I can call get poly x array. And then pass it over random starting x position, which is exactly what pops up there for me. Comma, rock, get 
poly y array right there and you can see that it automatically went and threw that in there see saves me time whenever you set these up right then i'm going to pass over that i'm going to have 13 points in each polygon random starting x position and random starting y position throw a semicolon there at the end and there you go that's going to throw all the rocks inside of that array list so that i can use them pretty cool and the last thing i need to do is create the paint method inside of here so paint graphics g there you are that's the guy and like i said before that's going to handle all the settings for everything in regards to drawing and rendering and everything else you could ever want to do graphics setting is equal to and just cast g and you can see it's asking me for another library so there you go just imported that pretty simple and it's also asking me for another library for graphics so there you are just import that then since i want this to look like it's in outer space I'm going to go to graphic settings and say set color, set that color to black. And then I'm going to create a black rectangle. Get width is going to give me the size of whatever this drawing surface is. And get height is going to give me the height. So there you are. There's the black background. And then I have to set up my rendering rules. I'm just going to copy and paste those in there. You've seen that a whole bunch of times. And that's just where we set up the anti-aliasing and all that stuff. And then I'm going to set my paint color to white. I'm going to be drawing those asteroids on the screen and they are supposed to be white. And then I just need to create a for loop that's going to draw them all on the screen. And this is going to be of type rock. This is the array list name that I'm going to use or what I'm using inside of this code. And then this is going to be the temporary holding space. And then if I want to move the rock, I just go move and it moves. See, real simple. And then if I want to draw, I just go graphic settings and tell it what I want to draw. And there you go. That is part 51 of our Java video tutorial series. Leave any questions or comments below. Otherwise, till next time.